So this thing now we're looking at writing a function, but uh, writing a function using an integral, using an integral notation. So this thing says find some function such that that's its derivative. Write a function where tan x is the derivative and so that it has that condition, so that it passes through the point 3, 5. Probably what I should have asked you first is one where you could just answer it by looking at it, right? Because if I had asked you the same question but said write a function such that this was its derivative and so it has, you know, when x is 3, y is 5, what would you say the function was? You could probably just write the function. What's the function, what's, what's an answer to that if, if you know that this is its derivative? What function has this as its derivative? What do you think? Not sure? Starts with x and ends with squared. You could say x squared plus 7, x squared minus 2, but we want it to work with this. So uh, we need to come up with some kind of a constant here. You could, you could fiddle around and say, well, when I put 3 in here and five over here, right? Like you could do that and say, well, three squared, what does that constant have to be? It has to be, what does it have to be? Minus four, right? So you could come up with a function that way if you happen to know an antiderivative of this, right? X squared is an antiderivative of that. X squared minus four is an antiderivative of that. This is an antiderivative where it happens to have this. The problem down here is do we know a function where tan x is the derivative? Do you know a function that has tan x as its derivative? I know it's thinking long ago to when we did all that stuff. Was there ever a thing where I said, find the derivative of something, and your answer was tan x? Probably not, right? But you can still, now that we know that derivatives and integrals, differentiation and, and uh, integration are inverses of each other, you can easily just write a function for this. But you, because you can say, if this is the derivative, then all I need to do is say, the function I'm looking for is the integral of tangent. Now I'm going to put x as the upper limit and 3 as the lower limit, which is going to be make some sense why in a second here. But since we're taking the integral of this, that gives us what we're looking for. Because they're inverses. If we want to know where this is the derivative, if we want to know something where this is the derivative, we just do the integral of that. It'll give us a function we're looking for. Except we need to have a variable here. Now I have to put a t here, not an x. Why is that again? That's where we're using x. That's the that's the x in the function is the upper limit of integration. Remember when we did the area thing? It's because it's the it's the where the area is stopping, and this is some fixed number. So. Whatever that function looks like, that's the area. This is the variable. And you need to use t to represent the, you know, that's the axis, right? That's the, just for the curve here, f of t. Now, the only problem is that would work except we want this to be true, right? So we need to put something in where um, this constant here. So let's pretend I didn't realize I should put a 3 there right now. Let's just pretend I said a to something, right? Because that has derivative tan x regardless of what you put here. But I want to I want to make this so that when I put 3 in here, I get 5 over here. And we need some so we need to figure out what this constant is here. There has to be a constant on the end to get this to work. Well, the simplest way is to say, what if I made the constant 5 and then just put a value here so that this whole thing is 0 when I put 3 up there? Like when I put 3 in for x here, I want to pick something here so that this whole thing is 0. If this was 0, then I got my 5 there that I want. Well, the, the trick is just put 3 here because then if I go integral of from 3 to 3, this is the only thing we know. We kind of don't know what the values are, but what would that give me? Does that work? If we make that lower number 3, because then when I sub a 3 in there, this whole thing is 0. And I got the 5 that I want. So that's the function that you're looking for. Okay? The function that you can write is you can just write it using an integral. So this is defining a function using an integral. 
saying start with five and then just do the you know the antiderivative of that from three up to wherever you're looking for. That's a function that has because what's the derivative of this? If we want to check, what's the derivative of that function? D D X of integral three to X. Right, we can put big brackets around it here. Ten of T D T plus five. What's the derivative of that? So I'm gonna put this is checking here. What's the derivative? Well that fundamental theorem of calculus said if you have the derivative of the integral of a function, it's just that function itself for that variable, the upper limit of integration. 10x, and then what's the derivative of 5? Zero. 0, right? Just 0. So you don't even need that, right? It's just 10x. So that fits, right? Fits this point and fits that. So that's uh, that's kind of and when you read in the textbook and you and you look more into this, you will be uh, you, you know the authors of the textbook will really try to have you realize how revolutionary that idea is, because before this, before you know that idea came along, you couldn't do this unless you happen to know an antiderivative, unless you happen to know what function that was a derivative of. Here, anything, no matter what, whether we know what it is or not, we can just write the function. And with calculators, this is just as easy to work with as x squared or anything like that, because you can just punch this in and get it to work out the calculations here, right? All right, this is going to be something that's going to start to click as we work through more and write more functions for real things here as to what this actually means. I know at this point you're looking at this and saying, I get, I kind of get how to write it, but I don't actually kind of visualize what it means or what I can relate it to. All that you know now is, well, you have some constant here plus something that's variable, and it's just another function. You'll get, you'll get more and more used to it as you go here, okay? Are we okay with that? Sorry, the last thing I guess is to, to look at. At some point, if you happen to know what the antiderivative of tangent is, you can write the function specifically, but you're going to go to your calculator anyways to work with that function. Nobody works with this just by working out the numbers in their head. Wait a sec, cosine of a number. You got to go to your calculator anyway, so why not just not bother with this? It's just as easy to do the other thing. Okay? So that's, uh, that's where we're headed with this. All right? What you're going to turn to now is graphing this, it's starting to look at graphing functions that involve integrals, which again, you've got to use your calculator to graph that. Might as well just graph that. All right, let me stop that.